How do you start your small business? We're gonna answer that question in this video. Okay, let's rock, let's talk about it. How did I start my small business? And I'd like to share that with you because as somebody that started several different small businesses, I can show you the ropes, I can show you the pathway on how you get there. And I know it's super overwhelming. Right now you're saying, gosh, I've been doing some research and I've been wanting to start my business for a couple of years now, but every time I check stuff out, I'm like, how do I do this and how do I do that? Relax, I got you, I'm, gonna, I'm here to help you out. So any huge task, if you wanna accomplish any gigantic task, how do you do it? One step at a time, that's all you gotta do, right? Just put one foot in front of the other and just keep pressing forward. So you just gotta know that you're gonna wanna start and have that momentum that every single day you're making progress at your business. But the business, any business starts with simply an idea. Now remember, ideas are nothing without execution. So if you're not gonna put in any work and you're one of those dreamers that just likes to sit back and brainstorm and think of all the next greatest ideas on planet Earth, but you do nothing about it, they're worthless. It's sad, but true. And I know people in my life that are like that. I mean, not everybody wants to be the person that's the workaholic and putting in all the work or building the business. They wanna be the ideas person. That's how some people are. And, but if you're wanting to be the person that says, no, 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 I wanna manifest this thing. I want it to become something. I want it to become a reality. I wanna have my own business. Then you know that you've gotta start going in all the direction and making those steps. So it starts step one, simply with an idea. Find something that you're passionate about that you really wanna do. Maybe you found a niche or a huge need in the market, something that's gonna solve a huge problem. And you're like, I gotta do this now because I'm gonna make a lot of money if I do it. I mean, you know, you've heard how a lot of people get mega rich. They find a serious problem that like millions of people are having and they solve it and they make a business out of it and they make millions of dollars. Why? Because they're helping millions of people. And maybe you're like, no, I don't need to do that. I just wanna start a small business. I wanna start a restaurant or I, I like shoes and I wanna start a shoe company or what, whatever your business is gonna be, it starts with that idea. So make sure whatever that idea is that you're incredibly super passionate about it because you'll never work a day in your life. You'll never feel like you're working a day in your life if you love it. That's how it is with my businesses. I get up every day, I run my routine and by the time the day's done, it's like, where'd the time go? But you know how it is when you're working for a company or a corporation and you're sitting in that cubicle or you're sitting in that office and you're just like, ah, Oh man, how has it only been two hours today? I'm ready to go home. You know, I, I want to get to the weekend. I want to get to Friday. What kind of a life is that? You don't want to live that, right? So you're wanting to start a business and you're like, okay, so I'm ready to rock. I'm ready to start it. What do we do? So ironically, I'm filming this. We're filming this on July 13th, 2020. And the reason I want to share that with you, that concept, that date with you is because ironically, I registered another business today, July 13th, 2020. It's the Make It Happen Foundation, Inc where I'm going to help mentor, teach, and the foundation is gonna help empower people on how to start a business, right? It's things that we're talking about right now. That's the non-for-profit. And here's what's crazy. I've never started a non-for-profit. So this is my first one. But the steps that were involved and the steps that will be involved are gonna be about the same. Because a non-for-profit business is allowed to make money. It's not like, that's sometimes a misconception that people have is, oh, it's a non-for-profit, they give everything to charity. No, a non-for-profit can make some money, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. The idea behind it is simply this, that you're more in the, the business is more in the business of serving, if that makes sense. It's more got a, like a charitable aspect to it, right? Kind of like what I'm doing. I'm producing these videos for free. I'm not charging anything for this video, right? Now, at some point, there might be some monetization or something going on that you know we figure out, but the, you can watch a video for free. So we wanna teach people how to start a business and all the steps that you need to do. So it's ironic, July 13, 2020, that I'm going through the same process that you are. So it started with an idea. Hey, I'd like to give back. I'd like to serve the world. I'd like to teach people how to start businesses like I did. And so that's where it started. Okay, so what's next? So the next step was I had to form the business. And I did that, I live in Kansas City. I live on the Kansas side, so I'm in Kansas. So I had to go to the Kansas Secretary of State's website and I had to register that non-for-profit entity with the state of Kansas. And so you go online and you register it. And then after going through, I don't know, there was like 15 or 20 different pages. It was all done online, which was neat. And then the business filing fee for that business entity to set it up, was only $20. I think normally for me, it's like 150 or 
80 or something like that in the state of Kansas to form like a normal LLC or something. We incorporated this thing, but it was only $20, which was nice. So at the very final step, after we paid that $20 fee and we had you know listed our board members because we decided to incorporate this one instead of doing an LLC, that's what the attorney had told me to do. Um, that's what we went with. So now at the end of it, Kansas had put on the final page two links that I was able to print and it had our articles of, of incorporation. So that basically, it had the seal of Kansas and it showed literally what the exact things that you had to, to do. So give me one second, I'm gonna walk away from the camera. I know I've never done this before, but just because just cause it's today, I'm gonna do this. I'm coming back. All right. All right, I'm on my way back here. I had to do that just because we don't care. We're here to serve. We're here to teach. Okay, so the first thing is this form, and I'm going to show you. <clears throat> if you can see this, can the camera see this? Nice and clear. You see the state of Kansas seals on it. You see, you know, it's got the whole congratulations, you're non-for-profit. I'm going to read it to you here. Congratulations on filing not-for-profit articles of incorporation. Your business is now incorporated with the Kansas Secretary of State. And then it's got my business entity ID number, which I always tell you all that you have to get. It's got the name, and here's what's funny. So with Kansas, there's a, a database where you have to search for your name, because you can't take somebody else's name. But their, their database, when I call the Secretary of State, is like 30 to 40 years old, like with the way the program works. So it's not very friendly for like names if they're similar. So I wanted to register Make It Happen Foundation Inc. And there was none, right? But there was a Make It Happen Inc. There was somebody that had registered that, so it wouldn't let me register it. So what I did, and the person told me that I could do this, that's totally fine, is I had to change the letter I in the word it to an exclamation mark. So it's like Make It Happen Foundation Inc. And it's just got an exclamation mark. And they said, all you need to do if you really wanna have, in the state of Kansas, they said there's no statutes that say we can't do a DBA as Make It Happen. So we're gonna do Make It Happen Foundation, you know, if we have to, as the DBA. But they said we could also reach out to the person that has Make It Happen Inc. and get permission from that person. Okay, so if you run into the same problem, this knowledge will be helpful, is on letterhead, on company letterhead, you get it from the person that has Make It Happen Inc. in, in my particular case or whatever business you're doing to give you permission to use the name. And then you can file for what's called an amendment. So then you pay like, in Kansas, it's a $35 fee, which is ironic. It's like more money than I paid to initially set it up. It was only 20 bucks, but you pay a $35 fee and they amend it. So if I wanna get that exclamation mark change to the letter I and the word it, it's gonna cost me 35 bucks and some work and I am gonna to try to do it. But anyway, that's what it looks like when you register. So that's step one. So you had your idea, you go online, you register with, you know, with your local state, Secretary of State's office, you get your, get your business entity ID number. And then the next step, which is what I'm gonna do next, is I'm going to register with the IRS. So now I've gotta get an EIN number, right? So I've gotta have, the IRS wants to know everything, right? They're gonna to wanna to make money. If you're making money, they want their cut. That's how they work. So I've gotta register my EIN number. Once I've got the employment identification number, now I'm ready to rock and roll. Um, we've got board of directors on this particular entity, and if, if you've got a partner or whatnot, no matter what you do, you're still going to need some form of an operating agreement. That's gonna basically set the rules of the business and who has the power to do what, okay? So it's, it's really important that you get these things set up. And I highly recommend getting a lawyer, getting an attorney, somebody licensed within your state to, do, to help you out. I had an attorney helping me out with this because I had never registered a non-for-profit. I never had done that before. And even though I'm super experienced with other businesses, like for-profit businesses, I don't wanna check the wrong box. You know, I don't wanna make mistakes. And now's the time to probably set it up right. So that's where I say, don't be cheap when you're setting up your business. Get it set up correctly. I know, I know people try to save money. I'm not saying to be a spendthrift. I'm just saying do the necessary things to get your basis and your company, your paperwork set up so everything matches. Because the last thing you wanna do is to have something registered, say with the IRS, that doesn't match what you have with the state or something like that. You wouldn't want that. You want it all to be clean and all to match. So like for me, before I register the EIN number, I'm gonna see if I can get this business name changed because I really wanted it to be Make It Happen Foundation Inc. 
right? And I'm real stubborn with that name. So I'm gonna really try, and because I'm doing this to help people out, I'm hoping this guy will be nice and cooperate and help me out. And if not, I might have to register with the IRS with that friggin' exclamation mark, you know, it's what it is. But these are the steps, you know, these are the pains you go through when you're in business. These are the things you, the, the speed bumps, if you will, that you hit along the way. And when I say keep pushing forward, never give up, that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Like, I could have been like, ah, somebody took my name. Ah, forget about it, I'm not gonna do it. No, I'm not gonna stop trying to help people and try to teach people just because I, I one letter in the name doesn't work in the system. No, I'm gonna try to figure it out. And, and that is a just a prime example of what you deal with daily in business is things get thrown at you. Like I said earlier, a, you'll hit a speed bump and you'll be like, whoa, and it'll derail you for a little bit. And some are bigger than others, some are small. This is a small one in my opinion. I mean, it's just gonna take some time, but that's a small one. But it's your ability to be relentless then keep pushing forward no matter what it is to make your business successful. So that's so we went through, let's run down the steps. You had your idea, you registered your business entity, you're gonna register your EIN number, you're gonna set up your operating agreement. Now you gotta figure out, do you wanna hire people or is it just gonna be you? Remember my key piece of advice in business, especially when starting a new one, keep your expenses low. Don't think because your friends have a business or I have a business with employees that you need to just start hiring employees. Don't do that. Employees can single-handedly bankrupt your business because they're gonna cost money. So if it doesn't justify paying people, don't do it. Don't do it just because other people have employees. You'll know, you'll get to the point where you're doing, you're, you're making good money and you're getting overwhelmed and you're like, I need help. Well, that's a good problem, right? You're making too much money and you don't have enough time in your day. Great, that's what employees are for. So hire them and train them. Okay, so now here's the next thing that I say is incredibly important if you're gonna set up a business. Before you get up and going and you get everything figured out, I want you to start setting up your processes, your standard, standard operating procedures, or people like to refer to them as SOPs. Set up your processes and your SOPs. Get them set up now. So what those are is anything you do for that business needs to be put on paper, right? If you're a restaurant, I'm gonna use the example of McDonald's. I remember seeing this one day that I went on many years ago. I haven't had McDonald's in, in God knows how long, probably at least 10 years. But you go to McDonald's and you can see some of their processes actually are like laminated and taped to the wall. The guy that's making the hamburgers, it says like, put a bun, take a hamburger patty, one slice of cheese, one pickle, and then another bun. Like they literally have that. So that's what I mean by processes. If you wanna teach an employee how to make a hamburger, you're not gonna just tell them, oh, just grab you know, a couple buns and you know, grab the, the I don't know, a, a, a hamburger patty and then some of the fixins and just put it all together and just, there's your burger. No, because they're gonna screw it up. One employee you're gonna hire is gonna put like 30 pickles on a sandwich and one guy's not gonna put any pickles. He's gonna put, I don't like pickles, so I figured that person didn't like pickles. No, if you want your business to perform the way you want it to perform, you gotta have it all documented. So everything you create and every system, anything that needs to be done in the business, Document that stuff and then you'll learn this because you, eventually if you get big enough, you're gonna probably hire an HR person or an HR department if you get a really big company. And those people are gonna have to enforce things with the employees based off of what? Based off of paperwork, right? So they're gonna, they're gonna look at like your employee handbook and they're gonna say, okay, well, in your employee handbook, you don't state anywhere that the employees can or cannot do that. So you're trying to write them up for screwing up but guess what? You didn't have anywhere that you had some form of documentation that says they can't do that. So it's kind of hard for that employee to really know. Now you might've told them verbally and there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of people do that. But the more stuff you put on paper, the better off you're gonna be long run. Just remember that for me. So create that employee handbook. You know, have an attorney spend 500 bucks or a thousand bucks with an attorney to help them refine it. They have a lot of good templates. Set up all those standard operating procedures, right? Get with somebody you know that's very versed and very experienced in the HR field and say, hey, I'm gonna start hiring people. I need some help, what are my do's and don'ts? And the laws constantly change. So don't think that like once you figure it out, you're gonna know it forever. The laws constantly change. The IRS tax laws constantly change. That's why you hire a good CPA. So they keep up with that stuff and you pay them to do that. You hire a good attorney so they can keep up with the other stuff. So these are the basics on how you need to start your business. And then once it gets going, then it's up to you, baby. I mean, you've got to basically figure it out. You've got to, you've got to put the work in. You've got to put all that blood, sweat, and tears into your business. You've got to keep you know, educating yourself and figuring out stuff every day on how you can optimize and keep improving your business and things like that. That 
that's off to the races, right? And that's how you see in the end what businesses become successful and which ones don't. And I can promise you this, the ones that are like uber successful and then to pass the test of time have really focused on setting their business foundation up the best, setting up the basics, their SOPs, right? Their processes, their employees, getting them trained, right? Against those documents, reinforcing, you know, good behavior, keeping good company culture, working their tail off to make sure that they make it the best business it can be every single day. Those are the best, best, best businesses. That's the business you want. And remember that for me, that no matter how hard it gets, I don't care how hard it gets, if you want your business to succeed, never give up, keep pushing, and be the hustler.